Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to SoCal Loopers. It is Sunday afternoon, and uh, you are in for a treat. You get to see and listen to Dr. Monica Wesley, who's the founder, founder of The Sugar Science, uh, which is a, a fairly new organization started in February of this year. And um, let me just take this off a of share. Nope. Um, and I want to go through just before we just talk a little bit further about what the sugar science is, I want to take you through the disclaimer that, that we're talking about uh, the closed loop system and the do-it-yourself closed loop on this group. And um, we know that the, the loop app is a do-it-yourself closed loop algorithm and user interface developed through the work of community volunteers. While it may seem obvious, please consult with your healthcare professional regarding your diabetes management important please understand that this project is highly experimental it is not fda approved for therapy and therefore you take full responsibility for building and running your own system and you do so at your own risk so i'm assuming you're just nodding and saying yes so let me tell you a little bit about monica wesley who i actually just met a few minutes ago but we connected on email last week um, she started the sugar science dot org in february of 2020 probably just before the shutdown or at the shutdown and it's an interactive digital platform founded to curate the scientific conversation in the type 1 diabetes community so what does that mean it's their goal is to ultimately expedite a cure listen to this a cure for type 1 diabetes by fostering connection and promoting collaboration across diverse research disciplines. She's pulling everyone in. The team is made up of parents of children with type 1 diabetes, as well as dedicated researchers, clinicians, and friends. Uh, their leadership, if you go to their website, reads like a who's who in type 1 diabetes research and innovation. And if, it, if you look at it, you'll get excited. You'll go, oh, really him? I know that name. Um, they recently held a pitch competition for postdoctoral researchers and grad students investigating type 1 diabetes to accelerate research towards a cure. There's that word again, cure. Uh, the winners received $1,000 cash awards plus exposure to the community of over 1,200, 12,000? 1,200. 100, yeah. 1, so, scientists, I thought. 1.2 thousand. Okay. And, and showcase their work to potential collaborators and other opportunities in other labs. It serves, as best I can tell, a somewhat of a, an incubator, uh, includes job postings, research funding sources, podcasts, interviews from scientists to watch. Um, and Monica is the one who started this. She has a PhD in cell and molecular biology from Yale. She's the founder of Sugar, the Sugar Mamas. Maybe she can tell us more about that. I also believe she might be the mother of a type one diabetic daughter. Yeah. She uh, was professor of Marymount California University and visiting professor at Harvard University. There, I've built her up. There, she's gonna take it away. Um, thank you, Monica, for jumping in so quickly. And please share with us what you do and what we need to know. Okay, um, wow, that was a really nice introduction. Thank you. Um, and I'd like to just sort of like turn it right back around and say to the looping group and the whole We Are Not Waiting group that um, one of the reasons that I did kind of take the jump and do this was really because I saw what changes uh, you all made in the space. And I felt like, um, I guess just start at the beginning. Yes, yeah, so my daughter was diagnosed. Um, seven years ago, and we didn't have anyone in our family who had type one. We really, I had never really heard of anybody who, who had it. Um, we really didn't know that much about it. And so it was a kind of a shock. Um, she was 13 at the time. And, you know, I, we just were stunned um, by the, the level of care it requires. At that time, there was no Dexcom. Um, you know, sort of like to the phone. And so we were waking up through the night and it was just, it was really just a, a game changer, life changer for everybody involved. So the clinical trials, so I started reaching out to a bunch of scientists and talking to them 
And then I thought, you know, I'm now going to reach out to a couple of moms that are in my neighborhood, my area, and I'm going to, I formed this thing called the Sugar Mamas. So we would meet like every couple of weeks and I would reach out to a scientist and they would, you know, at this point it was no, it was Skype. So they'd Skype to us and we'd talk about it. We talk about like, what are they doing in their laboratory? And I'd be, sort of translate the research to the moms. And it was, it was good. It was very good. It was very supportive environment for me and helped me, I think kind of process the whole thing and gain support from these other moms. And then, um, you know, uh, I reached out to Doug Melton at Harvard and I, you know, I told him I was going back East. So I go back East every year to see my family on Cape Cod. Um, Cause that's for, you know, we're year rounders uh, there. So um, we, in going there, I said, oh, you know, look, I'm going to be back there. Could I meet with you? I said, sure. So I went over to his lab in Boston. I met with him and we had a lot of conversations about what was happening in the science scientific space. And he's like, you know, hey, would you like, you know, to do a visiting professorship with me? You can, we can go back and forth and ideas you might or might not have. And, you know, uh, it'll give you some street cred if nothing else, which was, you know, really what happened. So um, from there, you know, for maybe, I don't know, five, six years, I just kept going back and forth with him and talking to different scientists and reading. I was constantly reading all the literature and, um, trying to formulate ideas about what was happening. And it just, it became sort of apparent to me that even though the scientists are, um, they, do, they do communicate, they are, because of the multifactorial nature of the disease, there is a little bit of siloing because they are focused on their particular discipline. So for instance, the immunologists, um, you know, have their particular language and their, um, their work reflects that. And then the cell and de developmental biologists, they have their sort of realm. They each go to different types of meetings. There's no one type one diabetes meeting. There is ADA, but that's, you know, type one is sort of eclipsed there now by type two. And, um, you know, so it just sort of seemed to me like, boy, how could we get all these people in the room and communicating more robustly, you know, really get them talking together. What can we, you know, I reached out to my old advisor, you know, when I was a graduate student, I was like, you know, what, how could you do this? He's like, well, maybe you could do like after hours Gordon converse. That's really what you want. You want them talking freely. Um, you have to have a concern for IP, um, but you want them to talk freely and exchange ideas. So how could you build this sort of like after hours Gordon conference? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. So more and more conversations with other scientists, they all, I, I got a lot of weigh in from them. And, you know, I, I literally drove up to UCSF um, and met with like Jeff Bluestone and others, uh, um, you know, Matthias Hebrock. And I, I said to them, you know, if I built some digital platform for scientists and type one diabetes, what would it, what would you want it to have? And I'm just taking notes all the time. And they, you know, this was like, hmm the beginning of this year. So I said to my husband, look, it's now or never. She still has diabetes seven years later. I'm not getting any younger. Uh, I really wanna try to do something here. And he's like, okay, just, yeah, try it. So I left my academic position, little did we know what was coming. Um, and, you know, just, I, I, I had no idea, you know, nothing, no background in building, um, you know, website or anything like that. So I just sort of cobbled together a group of people and we started, you know, building this website and, I had a couple of conversations with Lane and others and many others. And then of course, COVID, uh, the pandemic hit and that kind of, you know, delayed us a bit. A lot of things happened. And um, so it, it took a little bit longer than we expected, but by July one, you know, I had assembled this team. We launched July one. So we're really now three months old and, you know, I have to say, I did partner with uh, College Diabetes Network and I asked them, you know, to put out a, a call for volunteers because it's all volunteers. Um, and we, I've gotten so many incredible uh, volunteer interns that uh, I don't even know. I, I can't even say anything that does justice to them. I mean, there's, I have 25 people working on this um, project constantly and, uh, as I said, it's all volunteer. Very, uh, they're a devoted group. They're super smart, super 
committed, super intelligent. I'm just, uh, I'm blown away by the things they come up with. So I'm very, very grateful to the team. And, um, and Rachel is inclusive. She does a lot of scientific editing for us. So I, I just have to say that um, it's a DIY project, a lot like what you guys have done. And I, I've, I've thought a lot about the We Are Not Waiting community and what they made happen. Um, and, and that really has kind of spurred me forward many times thinking about, okay, you know, look, they, they put this together and it's really important and big. And maybe I could do something that would be equally as helpful to the community because we all know, like one of the guys that came on board with us, um, he has a, oh, sorry. He has a big, <laughs> he has a big, um, hey, stop. He has a big um, marketing background. And so when I first started talking to him, I'm like, hey, Raphael, can you like get some information about how we should approach this. And he's like, okay, I will. So he went to like a health, um, a big conference and he's like, wow, you know, I heard these, you know, big companies that are, that are um, helping serve type one diabetes. It looks like everything's sewn up. It's perfect. Like, why are we even doing this project? It looks like everything's great for type one diabetics. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. I go, okay, now go on social media and see what parents and others say. And but then he came back, he goes, Oh my God, it's like a total disconnect. I'm like, yes, it is. It's a total disconnect here. We got to get, we've got to get the scientists communicating and the cross disciplines sort of fostering new ideas. And I also think that because of the way we're living now, um, at first it felt like, oh God, this is going to ruin the project, but I, it really facilitated the project because we had the ability and, um, you know, to connect with scientists, they were open to it. Um, we've only had two people say no to a podcast. Um, and they want to talk to other scientists. They are missing other scientists. And I think that they also have some belief that this could be a way forward for type one diabetes research. And particularly the younger scientists are interested. They're very social media savvy. They're all over Twitter and they feel like uh, or from what I've heard, that, that, that this could be a new way of, of getting things done. So that's where we are right now, three weeks old, uh, three, three months old, sorry. And, um, you know, I've got this just incredible team um, and we're, we're trying to, uh, you know, help, help scientists connect and collaborate, just like we said. What, what are your top three things that you do? Uh, me personally, or the whole group? <laughs> oh, both. Uh, well, for me, I'm on, um, you know, I'm working pretty hard. I'm working about seven days a week since, since February. Um, and I'm trying to identify, we're trying to create a repository. Of, this is one of our biggest things. We're trying to create a repository of all the scientists that currently work on type one or related disciplines. And that does not exist, right, you know, at the moment, but it, it will exist, we're making it. Um, so I'm working on that. I'm trying to get in front of the um, science that is, you know, coming out in bioarchives. We're trying to provide that to scientists. Um, there are a lot of big outlets there. There's, you know, Science Direct, the scientist, you know, dot com and, and um, those kind of outlets are providing, they do, I mean, bioarchives and Mendeley and all those, they provide, you know, papers, basically. They provide the information that's coming out. And that's great. Um, but if you think about them as, li as a library, we want to be more like a coffee shop, you know? So we want to be, we want to provide the information, the papers, but we also want to invite collaboration around um, the work that's new. So what I'm doing is kind of always finding the work that's new, setting up our social media. We have a content calendar. We also have something called Wovens where um, the interns are uh, sort of writing the style, if you've ever seen sort of the morning brew, writing in the style where that engages people to read a little bit about what papers might be connected in the space. And then 
if they like that, they've got a link to dig deeper into the actual paper. We're not really like writing the papers again or anything like that. We're just sort of inviting them in to look at connections we've found that we think might be interesting. So we have that going on and that has to be continually curated. Um, and we have podcasts which need to be scheduled and you know the research has to be done prior to the podcast and things like that. And we're, we're you know, promoting events. We have the, we just did the pitch competition, which was a lot of fun. It was so fun to see this, the young scientists um, interacting with some of the judges who are big names and getting pretty, I think they were pretty fired up about it. And um, we have another, our, another event that's coming October is called Off the Record, where we have a, a topic and we invite um, groups of scientists to um, be part of this salon, like a brainstorming salon. And this, um, you know, this is our first one. So we actually have invited people. It, it, this one's called Mitigating Fibrosis in Island Implantation. And so we are inviting specialists that are from in fibrosis. So for instance, we have a couple of UVA people that are really drilled down into fibrosis. And we also have people that are very um, much in the know with the island implantation space. And we're just kind of mashing them together. They're gonna to have a totally off the record um, conversation. And then they publicize you know, what they talked about, just a, a few key words. And then the audience, that the sugar science audience can sort of look at this and go, hmm, this is cool. I didn't know this person was interested in this or could be a resource. I'll reach out to them. So, so do you have uh, Zoom meetings among these little pods of topics. Yes, we have a lot of Zoom meetings. <laughs> and uh, okay, so I, I've had type one for over 55 years. And I was told, of course, as everyone was, that there would be a cure in two years and then five years. Yeah. And, um, and there was no cure yet. Um, and my concern was always that possibly there was some a privacy guarding of research. Do you find that or, and is that changing? Well, yeah, there is some of that. Uh, there's definitely competition and there's definitely inter, uh, protection of intellectual property. And you can understand that because um, it's okay for sort of like these, you know, the, the people that at the top of the field have already achieved sort of, um, notoriety in the field. Like they don't have to really worry that much about their IP and, and things like that. But the people that do have to worry about their IP are, are young scientists. So this is their, you know, their one great idea and they're going to bring it to fruition. They're gonna form their own lab. And, and so they're very, they are um, concerned about putting it out there. Um, so we wanna create spaces where this is, um, maintained and protected and yet also drive the interaction. So we make this joke, but it is kind of true that we are, um, we're kind of like Tinder for scientists in a way. Um, we want to introduce them, but we don't need to go to the wedding. So whatever, you know, so whatever they decide, however they decide to make some kind of connection or collaboration, we don't need to be there. They can just do it. And in terms of just industry, I think, we want to provide um, platforms eventually for scalability. And this is something I've talked to Elliot uh, Bobnik a lot about is how do young scientists and others get to scale their ideas? How does the scaling happen? What are the pathways? And um, how can we make those pathways more accessible for all? And so we want to be able to build something that will like an on-ramp basically that will help those who want to scale and um, address industry be able to do so and also educate them about the, the fact that there are many patent thickets that, out there that uh, you know you have to tread carefully in that uh, area as well. One thing that's good about us too is that we do not have any, goodness badness, is we don't have any kind of industry fu funding. <laughs> so um, it's all driven by donors and um, we recently got a very generous donation, so we're, we're excited about it. And I, I don't know if we'll always stay this way. I'm tempted to do so though. Uh, so, um, you know, so we'll see how it goes. But I, I, I think that, you know, places like the big institution, JDRF and Helmsley, 
would be will be places that we will eventually go once we grow a bit more. We'll go looking, um, you know, talking to them about opportunities. In terms of industry uh, support, that that's always been a topic we talk about quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it comes up more than I'd even like to hear. What is your concern with taking money from Eli Lilly, for example? Yeah. Well, one of my, I think one of my concerns is, well, first of all, we've applied for several grants that, uh, with industry and we have not received any, which is okay. Um, but I think that my concern is that will scientists feel less free to be on the site, to talk on the site, to, you know, do, to engage with the site if they feel that we have an industry partner in the background uh, monitoring it. That is my concern. We also don't for, really forward face to consumers. Um, so, I mean, I guess industry that we would be interested in featuring on the site, if this does happen, would be tools, you know, like the, the life science tools that scientists actually use, Illumina or um, an RNA seq provider, you know, something like that. So they're not end user providing to the type one community directly. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, the 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 group that interfaces, I think, the best with the type one diabetes com community. This is my personal opinion. Is beyond type one, and I think now that they've partnered with JDRF, they're really refreshing that whole scene. And I think it's it's just what they've done is great. Um, and that's their space. They interact with the consumer and I think it's, I think they've done an excellent job. Um, but our job is really to connect the scientists, to interface with the scientists and to try to, um, and you know, yes, we'd love to have a cure, but even if we don't get to a cure, we want to expedite the research and just make it more uh, integrative. Okay, so someone, um, Cassidy asked the question, Cassie's got some interesting ties with uh, Beyond Type 1 because she did the bike ride. Um, could we hear more about the pitch competition? I actually watched, you can watch the videos of the <laughs> three that, that won and, um, and I hope you can fully understand what they've said, but um, it, can you discuss a little bit about the, the three that you've chosen or that were chosen as, as winners of your first competition? Yeah. I, I definitely can. We were super excited about them. Um, the first one, uh, well, first of all, let me just describe the process, the judging process. Um, the judging was done via rubric and um, it was uh, Matthias um, von Herreth down at La Jolla Institute of Immunology and Matthias Hebrock, who is at UCSF, as well as Bart Rope, who's at the City of Hope. And it was also um, Jeff Millman, who is, he came out of Doug Melton's lab and he now has his own fantastic lab at Wash U in St. Louis. So it was those four um, judges. We actually reached out to a lot of different judges, but just because of time for uh, frame and constraints and everything else, uh, these were the first four who responded. And so we said, okay, let's, you know, you, we're on, you're on, that's great. So. Um, they were the four judges and Doug, um, Doug Melton agreed to um, provide a, a virtual coffee with the winner. And we also had donations that we earmarked for prizes. We gave $500 for the first winner, um, $300 for the second winner, winner, $200 for the third, and we did a people's choice for $175. And they all get to uh, have a podcast with us as well as an invitation to a pertinent off the record where there'll be a young scientist sort of contributing to the conversation. So yeah, the first one, uh, the, you know, the, the grand prize winner is uh, Marcus uh, Filfer, Filfer, tongue twister. He's um, at the lab of Mark Hussing, who is at UC Davis. And he also has type one. Since he was six years old, he gave a compelling, um, presentation and I reached back, you know, we had some sort of questioning, you know, what like for, as we came into the final uh, selection, you know, what we, who we were going to go with. So I reached out to the different PIs, the principal investigators, and I asked them, you know, to give some feedback on the candidates and uh, he just got a glowing 
you know, um, recommendation and um, plus the fact that, you know, he's, he's doing some incredible, incredibly good work. So he got the first prize and then a young woman from um, uh, University of Alberta at Patrick McDonald's lab, Jasmine uh, Maguire, she was second. And then um, third was uh, Mark Sicione, he's at Barbara Davis um, at University of Colorado. And then fourth was Elliot Durr, who's at the uh, University of Florida. And there were, uh, there were several that were really compelling. So it was kind of, it, you know, it wasn't that easy to choose them because there was a lot that were great. We also gave finalists, um, let's see, we, in the top 10 finalists, we showcased who those people were as well. And, you know, we had people from Canada who applied, Europe, Netherlands, um, and uh, Switzerland, and then uh, the US. And then the next one we do, we hope to even have a farther reach. Um, the, the research of the, the top 10, were they all fairly in the similar vein or were they very diverse? They were pretty diverse. Yeah, they were pretty diverse. They were, uh, we had one, I mean, even we, we even accepted one young woman. She was, she's at Harvard School of Public Health and her mission is to, she's examining environmental um, air pollutants and their impact on uh, type 1 diabetes etiology. So it was like far, far flung. We had that, we had islet biology, islet transplants, biology, and then um, genetics. I mean, it was, it was really all over the place. How do you narrow that down? Well, we had help with the, you know, some of the top people in the, in the, um, in the field. Is the, is the decision made by how, how much closer that research gets to a cure or how it benefits humanity better? How, how do you, it's just more interesting. How do you choose? We had an eight, um, uh, an eight tier rubric and that included the, you know, the tone of the presentation, the professionalism, the, um, the understands of, understanding of the science, how they frame their science, whether their science was novel, whether, um, you know, uh, let's see, what else did they ha we had? Oh, did, they, did they keep the time limit? Um, you know, there was a whole host of, of, of um, parts of the rubric. So yeah, it was similar to, it was pretty professional rubric. It wasn't just kind of, you know, it wasn't sort of just like we felt like they were good. <laughs> there was a little more to it. You know, they had to, they had a grading system and the, the science had to be, um, you know, very well, they also had to be able to describe their science and get the whole ideas across very well, which I think they really did on whole, a lot of them did excellent, uh, did an excellent job on that. As you see this all coming in, do you get excited for the future of your daughter? Is it that personal? Or is it the song oh, yes. that gets you excited? No, it's totally about my daughter. I would never be in this position if it wasn't really about her. I mean, I just felt like, I, I really feel like, you know, obviously I, I'm not in the laboratory. I wasn't in the laboratory studying type one diabetes. These other people are, but I'm, I'm good at connecting people. I have a scientific background. I have the training and I really liked being, an academic, like an, ac an educator. So I, I feel like I have those skills and I can bring, the, bring those skills to this format. But really at the end of the day, it is about taking some of the burden off my daughter. You know, I mean, I, and you know, everyone who, who's dealing with this, I mean, it's just such a, um, it's, a hit, it's such a hidden disease where you know, people, um, I, I think the general public thinks it is fixed, you know, I mean, they, they think, oh, everyone, they have their pump, they're all set, right? Or, um, you know, oh, you know, they're, they, they just take the shot and that's it, right? But so it is hidden in that sense. And, but we know uh, how, how it really goes. And the, and the challenge of the daily management of the disease. And I just said to, you know, my husband in the fall, I just said, you know, this is it. 
I'm just going to do this and I'm never going to stop. I'm just never going to stop till I get to the end of the road here with this because why not? Well, thank you. Uh, I, I'd like to say a couple of things about the sugar science, if, if that's okay. Oh, absolutely. Um, okay. Explain to people yeah. who are, because we don't. We sure. Don't. So briefly, my name is Rachel. I am now a scientist at a startup company working on beta cell replacement. I did my PhD at UC Irvine. And so I'm basically a customer for the sugar science. I'm one of the people that we're trying to connect with. So basically, Monica is doing all this stuff that I did on my own while going through grad school, but making it easier for people that are still in grad school, essentially. So like I, like Monica said, had didn't there, this didn't exist before. So I was basically doing it on my own. And now she has a great team putting all this stuff together to make the researcher's life more easy <laughs> so that we can better serve the type 1 diabetic community. And I think it's really important, the things that she's doing, and and it's very useful for, for researchers like myself. So like she said in the beginning that there's not really a place where type 1 diabetes researchers can come together. Um, like she mentioned, there's the uh, ADA conference, but it's more broadly focused on type two. So how can we more specific, be more specific about type one diabetes and the different research that's out there? I studied um, islet cell transplantation and I hardly know anything about anything else that's related to type one diabetes besides that. So um, reading some of like these wovens has been very enlightening for me when I haven't really focused on that because I was too focused on what I was doing in particular. So, and you never know like where a new idea can come from. So having this platform that she's creating that I can easily jump onto and look at the new things that are coming out instead of having to do a lot of that work on my own is really helpful. And I'm happy that it's very specific to type one because like for myself, I care about type one uh, more than other things because my sister has type one and you'll find that in this community and especially with researchers, we're also very personally connected to it. That's what I find so amazing about the T1 yeah. scientific community because every time you meet someone, you will probably meet someone that knows somebody or, you know, like personally cares about this kind of thing. So the fact that we're all like coming together to make it easier for the researcher to learn new things and talk with people uh, is really inspiring and important in my opinion. And uh, for, for one thing that I really enjoyed recently was Monica has created a podcast of talking with different um, scientists that I probably would have never heard from and so you get different perspectives. The one I really liked was with Bart Rope, and he had a very different perspective on what type 1 diabetes is and how it comes about, like more than something that I haven't really heard from other researchers in terms of, I think he said something along the lines of, oh, most people say people with type 1 diabetes have a malfunctioning immune system, but he said, oh, I think they have a great immune system because yeah. they, the immune system identified things that were going wrong. It was just a really interesting way of looking at it that I would never would have heard of. So that's the kind of thing that the sugar science is doing and trying to bring out these ideas that I probably would have never heard about because the world is so big and it's easy because, you know, you put a podcast on when you're driving to work or whatever it's easy to like slip into your day or the wovens are, you know, short one page thing as Monica has found that researchers are very busy. So kind of creating these short like snacks, I guess, of science for us. Snacks. Perfect. <laughs> so yeah, that's just from the perspective of a young researcher who she, I guess, is trying to target. And then I'd also like to say just because the platform is for researchers doesn't mean people 
like yourselves who are interested in research can also yes find information or if you guys know someone who also is in research or is um interested in that stuff feel free to like spread the word or uh make recommendations to us in terms of what you guys might want to see um is there anything all, you know, we can do as um, a proactive community that apparently are willing to take some level of risk um and are connected as we are, is there anything we can do to either contribute or uh, serve as a focus group or whatever to any of the work that's being done? Well, I, yeah, I mean, you guys would be incredibly valuable. I was thinking about this um, and I thought that maybe, you know, one or two or three or, I mean, we could, we could figure out a number of you could possibly join us for one of the off the records and be there as sort of um, real life feedback. Um, because one of the things we are gonna do for Off the Record is have people talking um, about, scientists talking about the loop and um, the algorithms and the management um, uh, and what, what, I guess what people really want, what the consumer really wants in terms of usability and user friendliness. So that's one of them we have. But yeah, so we would love to have your participation on that level. We'd love to have you come on as people that are interested in science, consumers that are interested in science, and you know, take a, take a look around. It is widely available and open right now. If all you have to do is um, go on and drop down to other. Uh, in the next two weeks, we are gonna be sort of closing off some of the areas, but still, I think the podcasts and uh, possibly the wovens will remain open to the public. And we're gonna sort of make sure that uh, some of the areas will be just for the scientists, but we will allow you know, um, consumers to come on for sure and learn about what's happening in the scientific space. Um, but yeah, and we'd love for you if, you, if you like it and you're interested, we'd love for you to donate. That would be great too, but no pressure. <laughs> um, how do you feel about um, the community being open, the device uh, data being open as opposed to being very proprietary? I think it's great that it's open. I think for me, I think, you know, more data is better. Now, what people do with that data, you know, um, and even for sugar science, you know, more data, the better. Yes, it, it does have to be curated. That's the thing. The data has to be curated for us and, and probably for your space too, in some ways. But I do think that the sharing of ideas, the openness, I mean, even scientific journal articles are now going towards open source. Um, they've got bio archives where that's coming out with, you know, it hasn't even been peer reviewed yet. Um, there's some resistance there from from some scientists, but others really like it. So there's some, you know, we, we are on the forefront of, uh, I think things changing in how, you know, uh, in, in how science and medical information is, is, I guess maybe propagated is the right word. I think we'd love to stay connected to what you do because there is always the threat that the device manufacturers will close the back doors so that we don't have access, which is the way it was for so very long. And um, I think we'll be very vocal on it, but it would be nice to watch as you go forward. Um, keeping yeah, no, well. I see a symbiosis for sure, I do. Um, that you guys are, are, are certainly pioneers. And it, to my mind, if we are not waiting, had not done what they did, and hacked in and really provided the uh, these data to the, the larger um, public, it would have never happened. It wouldn't have happened because I think, you know, I just think it was, uh, it was sort of status quo and things were going okay. So, you know, um, I, they didn't really need to change. So I, I, just th I just think that We Are Not Waiting group was just a, I mean, a, just a handful of heroes. To me. I don't, I don't much like bumper stickers, but I have a hashtag we're not waiting 
bumper sticker on my car because to me that was worth it. Um, so yeah, we do under. I also have a loop one, but okay, so I have two. Um, and <laughs> when you guys come out with one, I'll put sugar signs on my car. That's it. Though. Um, Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I, one other question did come up: as are are you following a model that was in another scientific field, or are there are resources like this for other diseases, or are you forging new new territory? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, no, this is, uh, you know, I mean, without getting too deep into it, but we have imagined that this might be um, the proof of concept for other disease states also. We're talking to people about making that a reality later. But primarily, my focus is on type 1 diabetes because, you know, I know, um, I just think that I have a feeling that just like Rachel said, and just as a shout out to Rachel, she's been phenomenal. She's been such a um, very steady presence. She is there for the interns. She is like editing what they are writing, helping them to evolve and always there to sort of like a check. Well, you know what, maybe, they, maybe, you know, maybe people wouldn't like this or maybe they would, or maybe this, because she's right there doing the science as a young scientist. So that's why she's so very impactful in our space. But um, so thank you, Rachel. But I was going to say that is I think that um, by by exposing people to paradigms and ideas they might not necessarily be thinking about, sort of they read a woven, maybe they're an immunologist and they read about developmental biology, or maybe they are, you know, a hardcore cell biologist and they see something about bioelectrics, which we've been writing about a lot. They're like, hmm, that's really interesting. May, and then it maybe sparks an idea. And that's something we're hoping for. And we are too, absolutely. Um, we, we are available. Um, we're not going anywhere. And, Great, thank uh, you. And, and we're actually continuing to grow. We are worldwide. So um, I offer us up as resource to you in any way that your scientists think they want to use us. Uh, Several of us already know Rachel, um, and we're just enthusiastic. So, uh, thank, you. thank you so much for your support. Thank you for being here. Um, tell people again how they can get in because I, I was able to get in, and you can poke around the website, um, mm -hmm. but they otherwise try to find out what university or research center you're with. So, how is it you get in? To the you can just center. when you go to when you go to say are you, you know where you're gonna there's a drop down it whether you're going to be you know I believe it says like postdoc grad student or like academic and then other so just choose other yeah and then you should be able to you know to get in um, and take a look around it's a very very interesting site you'll want to poke you'll take time you just kind of go into little corners on there. Um, and this is all about us, guys. This is all about what we're living with and the science that's working to make our lives better and possibly find the cure. So thank you for the time. I very much appreciate yeah. it and teaching us about what you're doing. One thing, one last thing I'm gonna say is, is that thank you guys for reaching out to, to make this happen. And I also just wanna to say to all the people that are out there who have type one or a loved one has type one. And I know sometimes it gets so hard, the management, the emotions, everything, um, and people just get fed up. Oh, scientists don't care, no one cares. They don't wanna cure it because they make so much money on these you know, items that they're selling us. I just wanna say, you know, uh, I just don't agree with that because when I talk to scientists, some of these people have given their entire lives to trying to figure this thing out. It's a really complicated problem. But at the same time, every scientist I'm talking to now is super excited. Right now is really the best time to enter this field as a scientist. So much, there's so much interface going on. A lot is being learned from COVID for the immune system. A lot is being learned from bioelectronics. A lot is being learned from genetics. It's, it's really all coming together and it's an exciting time to be a scientist here. And for those who are battling the disease, just know that there's so many people that are scientists that are really working hard on this. It's um, all over the globe and we're going to show who they are. We're going to showcase them and we're going to, we're going to help to um, connect them and, and just move the ball forward faster, I hope. So thank you guys again for having us.
Thank you, thank you very much. Um, okay, everybody, that's your homework, is to go look up on the website, pick a podcast and listen to it. And if it's something that you learn from, post it on SoCal Loopers. Um, I'm gonna to try to do that, um, pick little nuggets and every now and then highlight something that I've, I've seen or read there. Just to You can going. also follow like on Instagram and Facebook, LinkedIn, there's updates on, on all those platforms as well. That's that right. Great. Thank you everybody. Thank you so much for taking your time. I appreciate it. Thank you for doing what you do. We, Thank you. We're guys grateful. Too. Well, I'm grateful for you too. Alrighty. Have a great evening. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye.